Hello, I'm Bill LeMay, and thank you for watching Community Matters. We hope you'll continue to watch as we discuss issues facing our community and provide you with the resources and information needed to find solutions. Today, we are very lucky to have a modern-day Marco Polo in our studio. He is UNC Professor Jim Kitchen, who just completed Blue Origin's fourth human man flight to space and back. And back is the important part. Jim Kitchen is back, and he's visiting with us. He's also been to 193 UN-recognized countries, and of course now marks his 194th trip into space. 2,300 miles per hour. I can't wait to talk to this guy. Here he is, Jim Kitchen. I'm not even sure what to call you. I'm in such awe. I'm going to live vicariously through you for the next half hour. You good can, to see you. you can, it's good to be here. Thanks for having me. Where does one start with you? You have had such an incredible life. Can you just give us a little background? Because you have done so much up to the point of going into space. So I am a husband, a father, a lifelong entrepreneur, and a world explorer. And I really started, uh, the exploring started when I was a, a child. My parents were public school teachers, and they took us from South Florida to Washington State every summer. Uh, and I sat in the way back of a wood-paneled station wagon. So that's kind of where the wanderlust began. Uh, so I give credit to all of my explorations to my parents. Well, now you're married and you have kids. Now... 193 countries, that's a lot of countries. And you, and you spent some time in each country. I, I mean, did. it wasn't just a day trip. No. Did your, did your family go with you? Um, so, I traveled, uh, so I traveled the United States with my, uh, with my immediate family, with uh, my brothers and, and sisters. And then I went to college and started a, a travel business. And then I traveled the world, about 50 countries of the 193, with my children and my wife. Uh, but there's a lot of places that you wouldn't go with your family, and those are the other places that I went by myself. Wow. You found a great wife. You're going to have to write a book on that yeah, one. Yeah, she's, uh, she's pretty spectacular. My, my children were very understanding, but they were rooting me along, um, you know, the whole way. So, you know, they got to go to a lot of places, and we shared a lot of experiences together. But, you know, we, there, was, there were some places that just weren't appropriate for the, for the family sure. to travel. Now, you told me uh, when we talked uh, in the past, you actually uh, had a prenuptial for your wife. You wanted to explain to her viewers what that would be and how brave a man you are. I, um, so, so after, um, after I had uh, started a business and began uh, traveling the world, I said to my wife, um, I asked my wife just before we got married, I said, Hey, uh, this was 1996. Um, if I ever had the opportunity to go to space, that I'd like to be able to do that. And she was, you know, at the time, she was just like, okay, as if that's <laughs> ever going to happen. Yes. And um, so she kind of threw her hands up and was like, you know, whatever, right? Um, and then, you know, 25 years later, I actually had the opportunity to, to do that this, this year. So, um, she was really excited for me, as were, the, as were the kids, to be able to go to space. Yeah, we're going to talk about that. I'm just wondering, you know, I'm older than you. I'm probably the Mercury capsule age. You're probably in born mm -hmm. to be Apollo. Apollo. But we, we both kind of grew up in that era where, you know, space was like the coolest thing ever, right? It was yeah. comic books becoming reality. Is that where your passion came for, for space? It was. Um, so, like I had said, we had traveled the United States and... Um, going from South Florida to Washington State, along the way we would stop. And one of those places was Cape Canaveral, which is now Cape Kennedy. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And one of my earliest childhood memories was sitting in my mom's lap. And I'll never forget it, it was like yesterday. And we were on the beaches of, of the Cape and watching Apollo 11 lift off. And there it was, it lit up the sky and shook the earth beneath. And I was like, wow, I wanted to do what they were doing and I wanted to be an astronaut. You know, John Glenn was one of my heroes. Mrs. Glenn was my fourth grade teacher. And the word around the school was that she was the famous uh, John Glenn's uh, sister. Whether or not that was confirmed or not, she never dispelled the rumor. But, you know, she was John Glenn's, you know, John Glenn was, was royalty. So space heroes were uh, Glenn and Grissom and Shiara, uh, Slayton, Shepard, who... Yeah. Uh, 
uh, Blue Origin's vehicle is named after and uh, Cooper and Campbell. The original seven, they were my space heroes. So I wanted to be one of them. But I went to college and started a, a business, became an entrepreneur instead. I, I wasn't smart enough to be an astronaut, to be honest with you. Um, but started a, a business while at Carolina and actually began promoting low Earth orbit space trips. And so I kept the dream alive. So as a, as a child wanted to go to space, uh, started a business, began promoting low Earth orbit, orbit space trips, kept the dream alive with my wife saying, if I could ever go, I wanted to do that. And then, you know, 25 years later, so a total of 50 years, it took me to actually get to space. That's amazing. Okay, we're coming up on a break here because when we come back, I, I want to talk more about that because people are going to want to know, well, I mean, did it cost you money? How much money did it cost? Mm -hmm. But then the whole process, mm -hmm. amazing, because you're going to be able to see some video here as well of the capsule and the flight. It's, it's just an incredible story. I'm very excited you're here. Thank you. You stick around because we've got lots more to talk about.